Hello friends and welcome to a lecture on operation research. Today we will look into a solution for a transportation problem. Now we will solve this problem and arrive at the optimal solution using modified distribution method or MODI method. This is also known as the UV method. So the problem is a dairy industry has three plants. The dairy production capacity of the plants are plant number one. 12 kiloliters, plant number 2, 14 kiloliters, and plant number 3, 4 kiloliters. The bottling plants are located at three different locations. Their daily demands are bottling plant number 1, the demand is 9 kiloliters, bottling plant number 2, 10 kiloliters, and bottling plant number 3, 11 kiloliters. The cost of supplying milk to the bottling plants is given in the table. So let us say we want to supply milk from plant number 1 to bottling plant number 1. It's going to cost me 5000 rupees for a kiloliter. Supposing I want to supply milk from plant number 2 to bottling plant number 2, it's going to cost me 4000 rupees per kiloliter. To get the optimal solution, first we have to get the initial basic feasible solution. To get the initial basic feasible solution, we have to first find whether the problem is balanced or not. That is the supply is equal to the demand or not. Or the summation of the rows and the summation of the columns is equal or not. Okay, In this case, it is equal. Therefore, it is a balanced problem. Now we use the northwest corner method. The link for this is given on the top. Okay, you will find the card on the top for this. So we use the northwest corner method to solve this. From this, we get this solution. So the initial basic feasible solution using the northwest corner method is on your screen. This solution says that we need to supply 9 kiloliters from plant number 1 to bottling plant number 1, 3 kiloliters from plant 1 to bottling plant 2, 7 kiloliters from bottling from plant 2 to bottling plant 2, 7 kiloliters from plant 2 to bottling plant 3 and 4 kiloliters from plant 3 to bottling plant 3. Now the cost of this entire operation is going to be nothing but 5 that is the cost multiplied by 9 that is the allocation. So 5 into 9 plus 1 into 3 plus 4 into 7 plus 0 into 7 plus 7 into 4 and it's 104,000 rupees. Now is this the optimal solution? Now how do we find out that and can we improve the solution or not? So we use the MODI method or the modified distribution method to find the optimal solution. So the first step for that is you have to check for the degeneracy. Is there any degeneracy, degeneracy in the problem? So how do we check that? M plus N minus 1. We find that first. That is M is number of rows. N is number of columns. So 3 plus 3 minus 1 makes it 5. Now, are the number of allocations equal to m plus n minus 1? Yes, in this case, we have 5 allocations. So, it's a non-degenerate solution. Further, we use the u plus v method for the occlified cells. This is also known as the dual variable method, where u is one variable and v is the other variable. So, from this, what we get is, we apply it to the occupied cells. So u1 plus v1 is equal to 5. u1 plus v2 is equal to 1. u2 plus v2 is equal to 4. u2 plus v3 is equal to 0. u3 plus v3 is equal to 7. And we solve this resulting set of equation. v arbitrarily assume u1 as 0. Now, mind you, if I have taken arbitrarily u1 as 0 and solve it, it's not necessary that u2 do the same. You can take arbitrarily any variable 0 and start solving it. 
I have taken it as u1 is equal to 0. So therefore, we get v1 is equal to 5, v2 is equal to 1, u2 is equal to 3, v3 is equal to minus 3, and u3 is equal to 10. Now we find the opportunity cost for unoccupied cells. Now the opportunity cost for an unoccupied cell is going to be the cost of the unoccupied cell minus u plus v of that cell. Now let's calculate the opportunity cost for cell 13. Now the cost in cell 13 is 8. Now u1 is 0 and v3 is minus 3. So that's going to be 11. Similarly, the opportunity cost for cell 21. So the cost for cell 21 is 9. So that's going to be 9 minus u2. So u2 is 3 and minus v1. So what is v1? v1 is 5. So 5 plus 3 makes it 8 and 9 minus 8 makes it 1. Similarly, we calculate the opportunity cost for all the unoccupied cells. And what do we get here? 11, 1, 2 and 5. Now the rule here is that if the opportunity cost of all the unoccupied cells is positive, then we have an optimal solution and we need not go further. But if the opportunity cost of any one cell is zero and the others is positive, then we have a situation where the solution is optimal but not unique. When all of them are positive, then it is unique and there cannot be any further optimal solution in it. But if one of the values is zero and the others are positive, it means we have an optimality, we have an optimal cost, but it's not unique. There could be other optimal solutions too. But if you have one of the opportunity costs as negative, out of this all, one or more is negative. It means that yes, you have a non-optimal solution. So we have to attempt for the optimal solution. Now here the rule is you may have two negative numbers also here. The rule is you have to take the highest negative and start it. Now how that's done? So the highest negative here is in cell 3, 2. So let's go back to the table. Now, cell 3, 2 has the highest negative cost. Now, this is an unoccupied cell, right? Now, to make it an optimal solution, you have to give an allocation in this. Now, how is it done? It is done using a looping. Okay, we start the loop from the unoccupied cell. And from the start, we go to another corner. Then we go to another corner and then another corner and then back to the unoccupied cell. So it may be a square. The loop may be drawn as taking forced cells and making it a square or it can be a rectangle also. The rule here is you have to start from the unoccupied cell. Then the next corner should be an occupied cell. Afterwards, the next corner after that is should also be an occupied cell and the next corner after that should also be an occupied cell. If we start from 6 here, go to this cell that is 3, 3, then go to cell 1, 3 and go back to cell 1, 2 and then get back. This 2 is a valid loop, right? It is a loop, but this loop cannot be taken. It's cannot be taken because one of the corners, that is 1, 3, it's an unoccupied cell. So we can't take it, right? So you can take loop the way you want. You can make it as a square or you can make it as a rectangle. It can be taken any way. But each and every corner should be occupied and only one cell should be unoccupied. Now in this case, the easiest one, of course, is 3, 2, 3, 3. 2, 3 and 2, 2. Now, out of this all allocations that 
the other corner cells have. You have to check the least allocation. Right? Now put a plus sign in the unoccupied cell and plus sign in the diagonally opposite occupied cell. Plus sign in the unoccupied cell and plus sign in the diagonally opposite unoccupied cell. Sorry, this is the occupied cell. And then you have to put minus signs in the other diagonally opposite occupied cells. Now take this number 4, add it to the unoccupied cell, subtract it from wherever you have a minus sign. So when we add 4 here, since okay, there is no supply being given here, so it's going to be 0 plus 4. Now here already there was a supply 4, but it has a negative sign, so it's going to be 4 minus 4. Now there is always a, already a supply here which is 7, but it has a plus sign, so it is going to be 4 plus 7. And it already has a supply here which is 7, but the minus sign is there here, so we are going to have 7 minus 4. And therefore we get the redistribution of our resources, that is our milk, to the bottling plants as this table. Right. Now, is this an optimal solution? Is this redistribution of supply an optimal solution? Now, how do we find out? We again use the UV method for occupied cells. On the new table now, we apply it on the new table now. And here, of course, we are going to have U1 plus V1 is equal to 5. U1 plus V2 is equal to 1. U2 plus V2 is equal to 4. U2 plus V3 is equal to 0. U3 plus V2 is equal to 6. Now, if we arbitrarily once again take u1 as 0, you can take any other variable as 0 and solve it. This is what we get the other variables as. v1 will be 5, v2 will be 1, u2 will be 3, v3 will be minus 3 and u3 will be 5. Now we calculate the opportunity cost for unoccupied cells. And what do we find here? The unoccupied cells have an opportunity cost of 11, 1, 7 and 3. All of them are positive. If all of them are positive, then we have a unique solution and an optimal solution. So what is the cost now going to be? The cost is going to be 5 into 9 plus 1 into 3 plus 3 into 6 plus 4 into 0 or plus 6 into 4 plus 0 into 11. And that's going to be 84,000 rupees. I'll just clarify that. It's going to be 5 into 9, 1 into 3, 4 into 3. 6 into 4 and 0 into 11. That is cost and allocation. The summation of cost and allocation in the table. So that's going to be 84,000 rupees. Now this is lesser than 104,000 rupees. So this is the optimal solution that you have. So that was all about how do we use the Modi method. If you have, if you like this video, do subscribe my channel and uh, press the bell icon that's very important so that you get the notifications i will be making a series of lecture on oper operation research for this time the focus is going to be of course to start with the undergraduate students of engineering and management and of course if you like the video do share the link to your friends so that was all friends. Goodbye. Have a great day. Have a great time.